Hello guys, I'm back again. Hope you practiced what I showed you last time. Now I'm here for part two to show you the rest of what you need to know. So, in the scene we've made, we have an engineer building a turret. Scout watching from the background, him running through a door. And the scout chasing him down, but eventually uh, failing. <clears throat> But as you might see or not see, there's not very many sounds in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag down, we're going to, and we're going to go in, we have a dialogue track, a music track, and an effects track. So let's go into effects. I'm going to add, I don't know, weapons, sentry, build. Now this is a problem you'll have a bit of. It takes a while to load. Sentry going up! So right, now, so right now I'm just looking around for a good sound effect. This one sounds good. And well, that's um. Actually, we're gonna edit this. And we're gonna make it a little bit more quiet. We're gonna right-click it, set the volume, and we're gonna type in 0 0.4. And we'll add some wrench sound effects. And we'll just keep on going like this. It's good to switch, if you have multiple sound effects at the same time, it's good to switch between them just so that you can get more of a variety. Alright, now let's watch it over. Now right here, I want to have the sentry shooting at the scout as he runs by, so... We'll add some sentry shooting sound effects. Sure, we'll choose this one. You can copy and paste them by right clicking and hitting copy or hitting control C. I'll have them every three frames.
let's actually um, lower the volume of them. We'll set the volume to 0 0.6 for all. Now as he runs in, we'll have, as soon as he starts to crumble, we'll have weapons. We'll have a scream sound Try jogging away from an explosion, little buddy. You just got dominated. Pain, 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 pain. So now that we got one, we'll drag it in. Let's say right there. And we'll have a Foot step concrete. <laughs> and we'll add one for revolver. I pick one of the cylinder. So now we've got some sound. Actually, have it fade out. So, we'll And we'll, s and we'll turn down the volume to, to 0 So next we'll be working on particles uh, for our show. Oh, yes, so, in the middle of the shot right here, there's some unknown sounds that are clicking. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll up. We're going to double click the shot we're currently in. And it'll take us to the um, in view, basically. You can... Come in here and edit all the brush models, cameras, game models, particle systems, sprites, everything. <clears throat> but right now what we're here for is the game sounds. 
and we're just going to delete this one. It's gone now, so there it is. To exit out, just click this arrow and you'll go back to the normal viewer. Now let's talk about particles. Particles are a very important part of animating because it makes it it makes your animations feel more alive. So let's go to save the shot right here. Just shot right here. We're gonna have to essentially shoot um shoot at the while we're having to send shoot at the scout, we'll have little particles coming out of it. Now all now most weapons come with a turret muzzle, so you can attach uh, the particles to them. So we'll go. So we'll go right here. We'll go into our windows, and we'll go into the particle editor tool. We're gonna go to file. Open. We're gonna hit this up arrow right here until we get back to right here. We're going to find TF particles and we'll find muzzle flash AD. So we're going to find a good particle Let's use the minigun constant. Use to click on tools to switch to SFM. And go into our plus symbol, create an image set from the particle system. Browse. Muzzle, lady PCF. And we're going to set the emission duration for 99 and 99. And we're going to set the start time to 11 just so that we don't have to wait for it to start up. We're going to hold control and click on the turret muscle joint. Click the plus symbol and open it up so we can see the transform. And we're going to drag it onto the transform. We're gonna make sure in the procedures tab we're gonna hit zero. Now to actually be able to see, you know, when you the, if you just flip the um, clip back up, you won't see it. So you, could, you got actually you actually have to exit the clip to see it. So as you, facing, as you can see, it's facing the wrong place. We're actually gonna. Hit E to get into our um, tools up here, and we're going to rotate it about 90 degrees or so. Hit the arrow keys just to make sure, so that you don't have to it. Just a little bit more to the right. Boom, we'll get in a bit. And we'll have a particle for the gun. Let's go into Windows, Editor Tool, uh, Open, and let's go to, um, let's find Smoke ADPCF. Let's go with the Pipe Smoke. Tools, switch to SFM, new particle. So, oh yes, and make sure you you click on the shot you're using, you're about to use before you actually add anything to it. I cannot stress this enough. All right, just before we do anything, change it to 90 PCF. 
it uh, before a shot starts. If you want it to be a constant thing, just go pipe. And we're hit OK. We're going to go into the model, sort of motion editor. Click on this, go to work camera. Find our way back into the place. Click on the particle. Hold the square. Hold shift to hold it to, to whatever is behind it, or in front of it, or below it. And now it's right on the muzzle. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the pistol. But as you can see, it doesn't actually have a muzzle joint, so we're going to attach it to the root to transform. So we're just going to drag it up. And we're going to hit play head to hold it together. That's something weird happening, it's not actually going with it. So I'll try it again. So maybe if I use a different one, I think it'll work. Yep, there you go. Sometimes you have to try to use different bones to get it to follow. Now let's go back to our camera. It's a bit too, ins it's kind of looks like it's inside of the gun, so we're going to, uh... Now let's see how it looks. And just for the sake of it, how about we add some um, blood particles? But first, I'm going to um, get rid of these train sound effects. I honestly don't know where they're coming from. Well, I don't know where the train sound effects are coming from, but they're coming from somewhere. So that's where they come from. Windows particle editor tool. File. Open. Uh, blood impact. Let's use blood decap fountain. Switch to SFM. Open it up. Do an impact. Attached a transformer to his head. Used zero transform to glue it to his face. Back up. So it actually doesn't look like it's coming out of the back of his head, so we have to rotate it a bit. Alright, so let's see how it looks. Okay! Alright, so it looks pretty good. Well, we're gonna add a little hole right between his eyes just for better effect. 
So right, I'm gonna use custom. I'm gonna use um, something from the Left 4 Dead 2. I'm gonna use Gibbs. Really, whatever I can find. Um. But you know, if you can't find it. Since I can't find it, I'll just use a custom model called Bullet Holes. You got two versions. You got one of these, and you got like these ones. Now, since it's an entry one, I'm going to use this one. to uh, show an element viewer for model. And I'm going to add a rig onto it called model coloring. You can choose from all a bunch of them, but I'm gonna use custom color. Just red. Okay, done. Now we just move it on to him. Maybe into one of his eyes. And what we're going to do, else you can change it however you want in there, we're going to lock the head to the transfer, and we're going to hit play head. But you might be thinking, uh, it saves it from the whole scene then. What we're going to do, is we're going to you take advantage of the play head. We're going to hit square brackets, so we can move forward this one. And we'll use the trigger to just move it outside of the shot. And boom. Now it's completely out of the shot. So we're going to be up here. Right when it runs out of frame. Also, it really helps too that he ducks his head so that the transition isn't very obvious. Now let's work on it. Now let's look on um, face on facial animations. Throughout the entire um, <laughs> so right now we're going to add some to the faces. Let's get run. Now we're gonna. I'm gonna click on the face. I'm gonna move into the um, motion editor. And just for simplicity, I'm going to delete these two things right here. Or, or you can go to the motion edit, or you can go to the graph editor. Please. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these sliders. You can move his eyes from here too. It's what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them look like 
to make him look very smug that he actually managed to do it. You can also move this slider right here to make it only so that only a little bit of them move or like that only one side of the face moves. But uh, I'm gonna keep it pretty equal. You can also use different combinations to make better faces. Also make sure to hit uh, bookmark so that no sort of thing happen. So, but we'll have it change as he comes in to a look of fear. Open a bit, lips down, see screaming. And there you'll have and there you have it. You have now just gave them facial animations. We'll also do one for the engineer as well. So we'll give him like a smug grin or something. Make sure you click on the new shot. Open up the hierarchy, hit the face. Let's um, put him in the graph editor. We'll move this slider a bit to the right, like midway, right? Give him a nice smile. And there you have it. Alright, but as you can see, the bookmarks from all our other things are still here. So we'll just um, delete them. And we'll have them blow it up. We'll have them blow it up. And we will set to offset and we'll move it a bit. his cheeks draw in a bit so that kind of looks like it's like it's just blowing out now let's look back at our shot Now you know what? I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna remove the train noise from the shots because it is really annoying me.
I don't think I can actually get rid of the train noises on this map, so. Now let's work with some lighting. The basis for any scene is to have a fill light, rim light, bounce light, and main light. So let's get to it. Also make sure you've selected the right shot. Also, it's nice to have a second viewport for this one, so we're going to hit Control and F3. And there you have it. Now you have two viewports. You can also hit Control F2 if you want, but... Actually, wait, no, don't hit Control F2. Don't do it. Now you can mess with all these widgets to see what they do. You can lower the intensity and stuff. You can they use the same controls as the lights and such, so have fun with that. We're going to lower the intensity to the almost zero, just below, and move it in close to get a nice light. However, make sure it's at least at one. Now let's move to the behind the light to get a good outline. It probably it should probably just be about behind the eighty degree line of the camera. Again, set it to one. It gives a nice outline. Now, for a fill light, we're going to we're going to do something different for the fill light. We're going to right click, hit disable shadows, and now it'll actually we can actually put it underground and it'll shine all the way through. Again, lower it to zero. Now, because this is a close-up shot, we can actually get away with this, but for more wide-open shots, you're probably not going to want to use this strategy. Also, hold control to move it more slowly, and shift to move it faster. I'm actually going to um, make it wider. Now I think the lights are actually a bit too close. I'm gonna move them a bit back. All right, let's re-see this. And then one scene light. Now this light is for the rest of the scene. Now this light will more than most times be uh, a volumetric, so let's go and turn it into a volumetric. Enable volumetrics. Go down, turn up the volumetric intensity. Boom. You did it. We're actually going to give it a nice rusty shade. And boom. Now you're going to want to save lighting for like until like the last thing you do because it really slows down um, what you actually see like my game frame rate is going way down right now so I 
Like, as you can see, that's ridiculously slow. Alright. So for this scene, I'm actually not going to do lighting because the scout's already pretty bright. I'm actually going to have a light right here. I'm going to have a light right here. Always okay, so make sure you're in the editing thing. We'll make it a nice yellow color. Make it a little bit more. We'll make it a little less. We'll make it a little less intense. And we'll use and we'll um, make the far Z edge come a little bit closer, so it doesn't actually reach the back wall. We'll hit Control and Shift to set a point right here. We'll scroll out. Actually, wait a minute. Turn it to zero. And then let's go out. Now let's see how it looks. All right, good job. But you know what? The scout's actually running into the building without without his um, gun thing. So we're gonna spawn it in. New models. Weapons. Scatter. Gun. So you can choose whichever one you like. I'll choose the default. Choose it. And we'll just uh, move it into his hands. And there you go. We're gonna open up the scout hierarchy, go to other, and go into other this one. And we're gonna connect the weapon bone. You can hit playhead to connect it so that it'll follow him in. Or you can hit or once you connect them, you can hit zero to like lock them together. Or default. Alright. So I have a plan for this one. I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to disable the sound so I don't have to hear the train anymore. And it seems that it didn't actually follow in. There you go. So we're going to unlock it. Oops. We're going to make sure that offset is on. And we'll have it like fly back. And 
And to keep it there, we're gonna copy and paste it at the end so it doesn't, so basically it has to stay in its little circle. And let's see how that looks. All right, there you go. But there's one more thing we're gonna do. We're gonna open up the camera and we're going to mess around with field of view, focal distance, aperture, tone map scale, balloon scale, and SM all the aperture settings. So for, we're gonna start off with aperture. Basically, when you open up your progress with refinement settings, you got all this stuff right here. So we're just gonna turn all of it on for the moment. And you, this is like, it's really laggy at the moment. But as you can see, it's pretty, pretty pixely, so. We're gonna actually have to change the aperture settings so it doesn't look so pixeled. Let's actually get a nice shot where both the, both of them are in the shot. Basically, just if it's if there's too much pixels, you might want to lower the radius. Maybe we're gonna have to increase the base a bit. No, I think we need to turn on the strength like a bit. Maybe lower the radius. No, that's no radius is a bit too lowered. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now this actually doesn't look too bad, but I still think we got to um, maybe turn up the base, lower the radius a bit. Now the slider formula will not, will not always be the same, so experiment to see which one works. Now since this is such a far up shot, it's not gonna really affect that much. And actually this shot's not too bad either. There's hardly any pixels. Maybe it's because of how fast it's going. However, this shot is quite pixely, so I'm going to have to lower the radius. Increase the base. And maybe increase the strength. Now the people at Valve must be freaking magicians because I've actually looked for the Meet the Soldier um, file and they're, and they're able to do aperture without even having to move these um, sliders. So I can only come to the conclusion that they're magicians. Yep, now I'm shot. All right, back to the drill. Maybe make the strong shadows a bit stronger so that they don't get pixelized. Too strong. I 
Now remember, it'll actually look a lot better in um, Blot when you render it, so don't worry too much about it. Alright. So now we've got the issue of stuff out of the way. Let's actually um, go to this shot right here, and we're gonna add some uh, field of view and focal distance. So we're gonna go into our graph editor. We're going to um, select, we're gonna use control to deselect the transform and get rid of these two things right here. Hit delete to get rid of them. Oh, actually, um, make sure you deselect field of view too. Now we're going to move the side that says focal distance as far as we can. And you can right click, remap slider range to make it go more far. I'm going to set it to 500. Nope, that's not enough either, so we're going to have to move it up to 700. Nope, not even in still. All right, 800. There we go, just perfect. And we're gonna jump the aperture a bit. So now it's completely focused on the engineer. Actually, you know what? Let's do this backwards. I wanna start off focusing on the scout and uh, then eventually focusing on the engineer. So we're gonna move it all the way back to where it's just right in front of the scout. So now it's entirely focused on the scout. And now only in, on now only the engine's in focus. Now this is a shot where it's completely pointless because it's too far out. And I think we're done. I think that I think I've covered everything. To, um, if you want to make your animations look better, show an element viewer, camera, set, set a, like a, re a dark red tint, like a really dark red. And set the depth of field quality to full. Let's see this. All right. If uh, to render it, hit file, export movie, save it, select somewhere on your desktop where you want it to go. And we'll call it toot or Now, when you first um, download this, it won't have all these options. It'll only be AVA, and you can choose AV uh, uncompressed or sin pack. To get all the options up here, sorry, you can only choose. 
but to get all the options up here um, you gotta uh, download um, QuickTime that, that Apple thing but since I but since I've already downloaded QuickTime I'm going to use mp4 and h264 compress oh yes now but now make sure that you have audio selected I'm actually gonna have to cancel and uncheck this just to make sure you can add post render commands you can increase the frame rate to whatever you want you can show the ID shots like of amount of time and such You can change anything in here. You can even make it so all the characters have outlines. But we're going to export movie. And it does take a horrendously long time to render, so be ready for that. Be ready for that. 